Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for more Project Cheap Golf. Right off the bat, I'd like to thank everyone for the support for the last video. I'm pleasantly surprised so many of you were interested in my haggard old golf and how many questions and suggestions you guys had. The most asked question was about what the actual cost of veg oil is and if it was worth running a car on it. Um, well, I get my oil from two sources, with the most reliable one being Costco. Before the lockdown, I paid about £15.99 for 20 litres, so you're looking at just below £80 a litre, compared to about £125 for diesel. Um, I do also occasionally find deals in supermarkets, like uh, I found a 5 litre bottle for £3 about a month ago in Morrison's, but I could only really buy about three of them, because um, I wanted to avoid looking like I was panic buying, since it was just about the middle of the coronavirus hysteria. To be honest, I bought the car on the assumption that the oil would be a little bit cheaper, since when I last ran a veg burner, it was just under £12 for 20 litres, which was in 2015. It's still very much worth the savings in my opinion, especially when you consider you get to drive 20 plus year old cars with lower fuel costs than a modern eco box. Um, Plus, I haven't had a chance to see what the prices are like in Costco since the event. This might be a good time to remind our viewers, if there are any, please don't think about the event. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, remain indoors. So prices could have changed by now. Last time crude oil prices dropped dramatically, the price of Costco veg oil dropped as well, so here's hoping that that happened again. I was also asked why I didn't find a source of waste cooking oil and filter it, and there's two reasons for that. First, most of the problems I've seen people having uh, when running on cooking oil is related to the fact that it's used oil. It's very difficult to filter out all the water and trace elements in waste oil, and over time it can mess with the car. It's far easier just to use new oil to begin with. Secondly, I literally do not have anywhere to house and use a messy filtration system. I'm just living in a rented room just now, and you'll see later in this video that any work I do in my car is just done on the street. Anyone could do what I'm doing as long as they have a basic tool set and ideally somewhere to store a few clean 20 litre containers. A few people asked if I was mixing anything with the veg oil, and up until now I've not. It's just been running relatively happily on 100% undiluted veg or sunflower oil. I'm going to run a tank of diesel through it because the prices have dropped enough and I can't get to Costco right now. Also, I found that since I'm only driving a couple of miles to work each day, the engine doesn't get a chance to get up to temperature. Because of this, there seems to be more white smoke coming from the exhaust after startup, and sometimes it takes about 30 seconds to stop. I found that if I take the car on a longer journey, then it stops the white smoke completely in the next cold startup. Uh, from some research, this seems to be a common problem with naturally aspirated diesels, just because they don't run as hot as the turbocharged ones so it's more difficult for them to burn everything off. Finally, on the viewer response side of things, there was a lot of backlash about trying to run the car on used engine oil. It basically turned into some people claiming it was highly illegal and would destroy the car almost instantly, and other commenters saying that they've been running um, diesel vehicles on engine oil for ages and it runs fine. The guys that actually do run waste engine oil uh, do seem to put it through a centrifuge to filter out all the micron sized metal particles and that's simply too much effort for a guy like me just trying, trying to get rid of 10 litres so it's not really worth it for me so I'm probably going to drop that idea. I think by now I've covered everything about the veg oil aspect of the car but if you have any more questions then just leave a comment. So this week I fixed a few things on the Golf and did some maintenance. I picked up 20 litres of 5W30 oil from a Lithuanian company called Fanfaro for £38. Um, the only information I could find about it were all of these absolute nuggets posting reviews after running their cars on it for a few weeks. So yes, yeah, Steve, it must be good if your car didn't catch fire immediately after an oil change. Um, I'm going to see what it looks like. Um, coming out of the engine in about six months when I do my next oil change. So I'll make another update round of it then. Uh, I did buy 20 litres of 5W30 prior to this for only £30, but it got damaged in transit. Thanks DHL, quality service as always, great job. The oil and filter change were done with only a few mishaps. I couldn't get the filter cover off by hand, even though I screwed it on by hand. Uh, only three months ago, so I had to use my specialist poverty belt tool. 
The sump plug thread is kind of rough, so I'll need to get a tap and die set at some point to clean the thread up a bit. That was still no excuse for the piss poor draining technique I tried to use that pissed oil everywhere. I'd normally put down some cardboard, but I just simply didn't have any at the time. But I mean, that would have been a better solution than scrubbing all the oil out of the tarmac afterwards like I had to do. The dipstick tube was changed, which required way more force to get on than I thought it would. My improvised hammer managed to get it all the way on. Apparently this is a common problem because the years of heat cycles caused the plastic f to fatigue and break, but I'm pretty sure that it was because of... Carol Baskin! I changed the fuel filter, which should have been done earlier because of my fuel choice. When you first start running a car on veg oil, it can collect all the sediment from the bottom of the fuel tank and pull it through the fuel lines. This is why you should change the filter shortly after your first veg oil fill up. The rear wiper motor was broken when I first got the car, so I sourced a used one from a specialist auction site only known for the highest of quality goods. Once I got the interior panel off the tailgate, it was easy to see that the old motor had started leaking internally since the washer fluid lines were running through it. It had leaked everywhere below it, which had seized the tailgate lock, so that's now been added to my list of repairs. The new motor worked fine, but still somehow managed to get the better of me. I bled the brakes using a one-man brake lead kit. It worked okay, but did fall apart at one point and leaked brake fluid everywhere, but was okay once I put it back together. Uh, since I had to pump the brake pedal while assuming the kit was doing its thing un unassisted, I didn't realise it had fallen apart until after about three or four full pumps of the pedal. It just means that if you're using one of these things, you should only do a couple of pumps between each check of the line. One of the brake bleed nipples on the front caliper was excessively corroded, so unfortunately only three corners and the master cylinder got fully flushed. It was also the first time I got a chance to take the rear wheels off and have had a good look behind them. There's still a bit of meat in the pads, but the rear discs are pretty pitted. Uh, also, the rear end of the Golf was feeling a bit bouncy, so the rusty old shocks will need replacing soon, so that's yet more stuff to add to the repair list. Finally, the inevitable happened. I found my first bit of rust that will need done before the next MOT. The front jacking point is on its way out and the metal behind it needs a new patch. It's just a little bit of the outer sill and a flat section of the metal behind it, so it's definitely not the most difficult job. I was gutted to find that because the rest of the car has absolutely no rust on it whatsoever. Even I took it by a tire shop the other day and the owner even commented on how rust free it was. It's not going to be the biggest problem because the MOT is not until early next year anyway. Um, so, I've got plenty of time to either pick up a welder or find someone who can do it a little bit cheaper if I don't have the space to do it. And that about wraps it up for this week. I have some paint coming from eBay in the next few days so I can give the wheels a, a refurb on my next video before some new rubber. Uh, the alloys at the moment are in pretty poor shape someone's done a very bad job of painting them i'm also looking at what to do about some interior niggles like there's a bunch of cigarette burns on the driver's seat and there's a little bit of mold and um yeah if you like this video subscribe and i'll hopefully see you next time